What the hell are ambassadors anyway? Social emergency. These early ambassadors understood very well that this position was one of prestige. Instead of being proper role models, they turned to a bad influence and even a joke. So, after posting our first video, more people came forward with even more tea. Rattle. It should arrive any minute. Rattle. But it's a little. Rattle! What? Gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Welcome to part two. Hello everybody, my name is Moon, and welcome back to my channel. As we kept pulling away the mask of ambassadors, we came across even more f <laughs> that they have swept under the rug to keep up the appearance that they quote-unquote love the community. Yeah, so like, I just don't know. Okay, well yeah. honey, we'll circle back tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. good. Alright, have a good day. Goodbye. Yeah. That bitch is crazy. Rattle helped with the info, and a lot of people contacted her about this shit, so she's here to help me wade through it all. We'll be revealing the true colors of some of these ambassadors that have unfortunately poisoned the community from the inside out while keeping a lock on the door on how they truly are as people. If you haven't already, once again, please go to Rattle's video to check out part one of this series to get the full understanding of ambassadors first. And if y'all have any stories that you've had with the SSO ambassadors, please let us know in the comments or our social medias below. Thanks for having me, Moon. Let's dive into it and see what we find. In the current state of things, ambassadors have too much power, they spread an obscene amount of toxic positivity throughout the community, they love their status more than the community, and this leads to the pride cometh before the fall situations. Do you mean facepalm moments? Yon's what I have said, my own valorous cousin. If he could just not turn to a 16th century playwright, I got a story to tell. Pretty doth bed. <sighs> What am I gonna do with you? Nechka Winhart was suddenly banned from SSO's Discord server after mentioning a speed cheat and toxic positivity. Completely bewildered by the ban, she contacted one ambassador at first with the following message. Hello? Can I ask why I was banned from the SSO Embassy server? She also gave her Discord user number and name, but they never replied. She continued to press for an answer while calling out their unprofessionalism, but after a long while, she finally gave up and asked another f ambassador the same question. The answer? Hello? Hmm. I'll look into this for you. Not the cap. <laughs> She tried to ask for an update and was ghosted shortly after being told they're waiting on a reply. A few days later, the first ambassador finally contacted her, explaining that they do not handle the bans, and the reason for the ban was because, and I quote, Mentioning and admitting the cheating was against the rules of the server and SSO's terms of service. And Nechka rightfully expressed her frustration. Why hadn't they simply explained this on the first day she was banned? Why didn't anyone contact her explaining the ban? Why did they ignore her for days before getting back? She also called them out on the toxicity of the community and that they need to take a look at how people were being treated in that server. Another full week would pass before the second ambassador finally said they would be making a suggestion to lift the ban. Anechka expressed her frustration and upset and they replied with a copy-pasted apology. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? The rotten apple doesn't fall far from the tree. They would try and help further, but by this point, Anechka was fed up and had moved on from the situation. Whether the reason is being swamped, tired, overwhelmed, bored, or just plain ignorant does not change the fact that this situation could have been handled so much better. They are quick to slam down the ban hammer, but slow to explain why it was used. This, no doubt, has a direct correlation with how many of these ambassadors are 13 to 14 years old and really should not be running discords. Many kids will now jump on their keyboards telling us how wonderful they are, and that's great. But overall, the older you are, the more mature you will be able to handle these situations, and kids are often driven by emotion, afraid of confrontation, and will handle situations in the worst way possible, as seen here. Hiring kids to represent your game is not really a great idea, SSO. But how would you go about becoming an ambassador? 
One ambassador had a rather helpful answer. There is no way to apply for the ambassador program. Everything is answered on the post. How it's found out? That's up to you to figure out. No true advice, no helpful tips for conduct, or perhaps an idea. Just figure it out yourself. But it doesn't end there. This same ambassador further decided to make a post telling people to please be kind and considerate to ambassadors, and to remember that ambassadors are chosen by ambassadors. This only enforced the fact that today it is more of a click, and if they don't like you, you won't get in. And that's the experience a lot of people have had. If the ambassadors have blacklisted you, you're done. Electric chair. Have you noticed ambassadors popping up suddenly and then doing literally nothing for months? Or how great positive influencers don't seem to become ambassadors at all? Despite originally needing to have an active social media presence, it appears that people are now carrying the badge for almost no reason at all. It has little to nothing to do with your conduct and presence and a lot more to do with who you know and if the people you know actually like you. It's not what you know, but who you know. I don't know either one of them. And you don't even have to be an ambassador to get perks. For example, during the 10th anniversary, SSO shared out gift boxes with the ambassador. All right, hi, Editing Moon here to add on to the gift box thing. So it wasn't just given to people who would bring in the most clicks and most views. It was also given to people that were a part of the SSOCon 2021 birthday event as seen here by this lovely person that left this comment, so thank you for letting us know more info on the gift boxes than what we know. However, we are still going to mention the next point because the purpose of the gift box really has to do with this main point right here that's coming up, so I hope this helps clarify everything. Okay, back to video moon and rattle. Players who have complained or offered constructive criticism in the past or struggled with SSO have also received these packages. Why? To ensure that these detractors are happier and so we'll see SSO in a nicer light. Here is a picture of the box. Basically it is a bribe. Oh man, I wanted one of those boxes. You know what you gotta do, Moon. Oh, I had it. Oh. You gotta you gotta pucker up and Ew. Okay this was fucking weird. <laughs> And this comes into play with competitions as well. On April 8th, 2021, SSO held a hashtag SSO Storyteller contest and a lot of people entered. Ellie Pukangas would be drawing it up into a comic, so you can bet a lot of people wanted to f***ing win this. Like me. <laughs> but in the end, SSO chose the only person that would make sense ambassador. The reason for this is simple. If an ambassador won, they would make a post about it. And if they made a post about it, more people would see it. And if more people saw it, more eyes would turn to the game, more players might join. It was a calculated action. And a painfully disappointing one for a lot of us. Another situation a lot of you might know about is the hashtag SSO Eat With Us fiasco. Ambassador Vue Larts and Becky J Games collaborated on an eating disorder post with the hashtag SSO Eat With Us. Although it was intended to help people with an eating disorder, namely an anorexia, it did not take into account that people have different eating disorders, and showing pictures of food on timelines to people who have eating disorders it did not go exactly as planned. Becky J Games would apologize for the incident. Yep, I'm gonna interrupt myself right here. Viewl Arts did in fact issue a very wonderful apology and even went so far to link a place where people could find help for their eating disorders. I would very much like to apologize to Viewl Arts for not including this in our previous rendition of this video. It was unfair to her and I very sincerely apologize for not doing due diligence and double checking this fact. And I also want to say that I'm sorry that we weren't able to see Viola's apology in time before the first version of the old video. And also want to say I am so sorry again, Viola, for not being able to put your apology in. Thank you for also sending me a DM and a comment. And we're going to do our best to fix any mistake that we made in this video. Also, just to take a moment to remind everyone to please not contact, harass, or attack any of the ambassadors or people mentioned in this video. Thank you. These instances show that many of these people are too young or immature for this position. With too much responsibility and not being held accountable for their actions, it also shows that you are acknowledged for doing things as the likes, but shunned when not staying within those parameters. But unfortunately, it's about to get a whole lot darker. Where'd the lights go? Dude, the next part is gonna be fucking dark. I'm adding to the atmosphere like we're on those murder cold case shows. Mother f Turn the fucking lights back on! Okay, damn. Jesus.
It is tragic to note that as we go in farther, we find darker and darker stories. Many people feel that we should not be sharing these stories because it's quote-unquote unfair or because it's quote-unquote old news. The reason why we are sharing them is three reasons. Ambassadors should at all times keep in mind that what they do will always be remembered. They are big people with big communities and when they hit the water, they make a splash which can have ripple effects for a very long time. Pretending this didn't happen does a disservice to the people who went through it. Although yes, these ambassadors are now trying to do better it does not diminish what happened nor the lack of reaction from SSO while it was going on. They should not be held above the rules and regulations put in place by SSO. On with the story. The first story we're going to be covering is one that a lot of you might be aware of, that of Corinne Mistil from the Hungarian server. Some of her stories will not directly correlate to ambassadors, but it will give you an idea of how petty SSO can be when they want to be, and give you an idea of what a fine line these ambassadors need to walk. Corinne really actively started to make YouTube videos in November of 2016. Her videos were so awesome that SSO even left a few comments about how good they were. But trouble started in 2017, when she had made a video on the Furfall Mistofall area, showing how people could glitch in. A few months later, SSO suspended her for a week and then demanded she take down the video and remove all other bug videos or she will get a strike on her account. At the time, a bunch of people were making videos about this glitch, and Corinne couldn't understand why she was being attacked so personally. Shortly thereafter, SSO made an announcement that Mistfall would be delayed, and SSO claimed that the reason was due to people glitching into the area. All of this claim made no sense, a lot of people accepted it, and started asking who these people were. A Facebook user directly asked if it was Corinne Misthill, and SSO replied with a definite YES! You can imagine the backlash. She was quickly bombarded by attacks, threats, and a slew of plain old nasty comments for being the direct cause of SSO extending the release date for Mistfall, which, when we think about it, makes literally no sense. This could not have been a reason to extend the deadline, and really, Corrine was most likely only used to set an example. Don't go into close areas, or you will pay the price. Shortly thereafter, they announced a new batch of ambassadors. A few people started asking on Facebook why Corrine wasn't on the list, but this is only like one comment. Corrine Mist Hill is a letdown to the community. Damn. Damn. Not one of your proudest moments, is it, SSO? According to Corinne, there was a Hungarian SSO YouTube channel which had over 60,000 subscribers. She was and is a very positive player and as such, most people assumed she would have become an ambassador at one point. She was very kind and friendly and always promoting SSO. Like a classic aspiring ambassador, she managed to be positive even when the updates were quite lackluster. Corinne became friends with her and when she realized that this YouTuber wanted to become an ambassador, so she decided to help her out. She started the hashtag YouTuber's name XSO and a lot of people joined in, sharing stories and pictures with this YouTuber and tagging SSO to encourage them to give her a chance. Most of the Hungarian players wanted this girl to become an ambassador, the people had spoken. However, according to an employee at SSO, this movement made it freaking impossible for the Hungarian YouTuber to become an ambassador. Since this tobacco, they have a announced 19 other ambassadors and have given this YouTuber the cold shoulder. She has been in short blacklisted because the community love her. In 2020, during lockdown, a friend of Corinne, who knew the leader of the ambassador program, outright stated that Corinne would never become an ambassador because the leader of the program hates her. But despite this hate for her, she was still contacted to do a promotion for the Christmas event because they do know that she has a lot of sway and her reach is far. And in SSO's books, the only thing that matters are the numbers. Corinne makes a damn fair point though. She says that despite the pettiness of SSO, they clearly do need the publicity and marketing from their players. Also, the marketing team and the ambassador team are clearly two different groups. If they were the same, Corinne would never have been given the chance to work on the Christmas campaign. The next story involves a big ambassador in the community known as Angelica Coldforest, aka Ange. First story we'll look at is one about a mod, a content creator, and Ange. CC Creations had applied The Sims 3 animations to SSO models, and it looked amazing. This other YouTuber made a video about it because, yes, it looks 
Let's make amazing! Angelica, or Ange, left a comment about how this is wrong and shouldn't be supported. At first, the creator didn't mind, people are entitled to their opinions. But unfortunately, for some reason, her followers quickly picked up on the video and bombarded this creator with some rather rude comments. Look at her. I bet she ain't without all that makeup. Keep her, bitch, cause you ain't with it. Although this is a bad situation, the problem is that this attack comes after Ange had liked the original CC Creations post. Furthermore, it does not appear as if she had deterred these followers and the creator was left to deal with the situation. Another story runs far back to 2018. A few friends came together to start a project for Star Stable. We'll be simple and just call it the project. At first, it was just a small Discord community for fans of the game, but as time went on, this ragtag team decided to push it into something more. They wanted to create a website, a big place where players would have access to player forums, guides, collectibles locations, community influence guides, etc. and just enjoy SSO as a big fan website. They employed around 50 people and pushed to get the site up and running ASAP. Unfortunately, life became a little bit of a bitch and they had to focus on their studies before they could launch the site. They took a short break and in 2020, when they came back to it, three particular people would be joining them after the break. Rosemary Wolfworth, Ivy Cherry Pie and Ali Lightning Bridge, aka Jazz. It was during this time of development and taking a break that Ange, who was an ambassador at this point, decided to make a site of her own called Art Hub. This place was specifically catered to artists of SSO. But then a bit of backlash started to occur between Art Hub and the project. Some of the people who were working on the project were being bullied and attacked on the servers. Rosemary, Ivy, and Jazz, who were by now actual ambassadors, decided to contact Quicksilver, aka Llama, Cherry Moonstone, aka Mooney, and Luna Silver Lion, aka Artsy, from Art Hub to ask them to help sort the situation out so that the project could launch with without all the drama. During this time, Ange says that no one actually directly contacted her about the situation and no one really tried to resolve the situation directly. However, she does admit that it had been a petty time and by extension, we're drawing the conclusion that she could have handled it better. She further claims that the reason she wanted her friends at the project was to ensure that their time was not being focused on another project. She'd rather have her friends with her. After some back and forth, they agreed was likely to keep their ambassador statuses, but the official reason cited was, and we kid you not, that the project was copying ArtHub. Lama, Mooney, and Artsy's response was not exactly what they'd expected. Shortly before the launch of the site, they told them to cut contact with the project, as they should not be associated with it. And it was, according to sources, apparently bitter that these creators were supposedly copying her server art hub, and said that they were infringing on her work. The three ambassadors, Rosemary, Ivy and Jazz, who were part of both servers at this point, decided to side with art hub, because Ange was just a heavy hitter and a bigger name in the community. A big old badass ambassador. You ready to fucking die?! No. Yeah, I'm a bad bitch, you can't kill me! They told the creators of the project that they had been quote unquote too slow and it's not Angie's fault that they couldn't get their stuff together faster. To be clear, we contacted two out of these ambassadors. None of them came back to us. The creator of the project was berated on her server and belittled by other ambassadors as well. As the saying goes, you don't ever backchat an ambassador. She reported the incidents, but no follow-up was ever made. We also have to make it clear that anyone who was associated with the project was attacked and bullied on the server and very little was done about it. Because Angie was a big ambassador, possibly, but we also know that SSO's customer service leaves very little to be desired. To top it off, Silver Song Workshop, an art community for SSO, was released shortly thereafter, and Ange didn't care that it was made at all. Much like the situation from earlier with CC Creations post, we find that Ange would often like one project but shoot down a similar one. Since then, the project was shut down, and it has not been resurrected since. More people have come forward about the project and others have confirmed what happened during this situation. What we can't deny is the harassment and attacks the people from the project endured. Whether this was directly instigated or an unfortunate byproduct, it doesn't matter as the end result was the total shutdown of a wonderful project. We got more D. I don't know, How much alcohol does this have? Just enough to me through Oh, hell no! Not again! <laughs> But these stories tend to get worse as we move on. We're going to drop a quick warning here. Subject material is about to get dark, which will include the mentioning of inappropriate pictures. If this upsets you, please head on over to this timestamp to be spared. You got the eye bleach ready? I got around 50 gallons. Just about enough then.
Now we get into the most controversial situation and the reason why we had to yank back the vid and edit a few things. The situation with the supposed inappropriate picture. A few years ago, an ambassador called Pietra Darkbrook or Puff shared an inappropriate pic with a person who had not been comfortable with it at all, and there was a minor in the room too. The picture floating around the internet was essentially of said ambassador in bra and shorts with her stomach on full display. A few people contacted us, calling us liars and that it wasn't such a big deal. They did in fact confirm that it did happen, as shown by this post, but they made it clear that it was a joke. So we started digging. On the one hand, we had the recipient saying that the two pictures had been sent, one with the shorts and bra and one without. Essentially, a full-on nude shot of Puff's back. She further says that she had been 17 at the time, Puff 18, and her sister 14. She had warned Puff that her sister was sitting next to her. From Puff's side, she claims the pic was really sent as a joke, just some fun between friends. It was just a silly back and forth, and it has been blown out of proportion. But we've also had a few other people come forward claiming that she had more with them. However, the pictures have been deleted by either the claimants or Puff, and they couldn't send them along. Now I approached Puff about these further accusations, and her response was that yes, they did take these pictures, but it was a type of hype each other up sort of situation. Friends sharing pics between friends about their bodies, nothing more and nothing less. She would not share anything to anyone who had said no. As this is the most information we're going to get on the matter, we can only leave it as is and wait for anything else to come out of the woodwork to clarify the situation. Now we're going to dive into Puff's history because it is relevant. Puff has an interesting history filled with some really tone-deaf posts as she admits herself. She has, against the terms and guidelines, shared spoilers about in-game functions, she made racist comments, she has posted swastikas, and she has broken terms of service and shared her login details. Puff apologized for the situation, we know this. We do appreciate the fact that she was willing to do so and grow from the experience. But, like I said, we're mentioning this for a reason. She also apparently, according to an in-game chat log, told SSO not to make a person an ambassador because she didn't like her either. Suffice it to say, this is not exactly ambassador behavior that should have been condoned. Now to be fair, today she says that she's learned her lesson, that she has grown, and that she's a better person than she was, and she won't do this again ever. But we still have a problem. Why, after everything that she did, was she not removed from the ambassador program? We're not calling for these people to be removed, but rather we're just asking why weren't they removed? We can certainly say that people change, but from the outside looking in, what we rather see is that there's one rule for the ruler and one for the ruled. All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. And this isn't on the ambassadors, this is on SSO. Despite numerous emails sent and numerous reports given, SSO never really reacted in a definite way. Plainly, there seems to be no repercussions, no matter what they do. No ambassador has ever been stripped of a title as a reprimand. Whether they have launched witch hunts, whether they have posted swastikas, broken terms of service, whether they have had a hand in causing long-term harassment, again, this is on SSO, not the ambassadors. Ambassadors are, at the end of the day, only going to react to their environment. If there is little to no reprimand, they're going to keep doing it and play kings of the hill. And by staying silent, SSO is endorsing this harassment and these actions. They have, through their silence, created an environment where ambassadors are free of any responsibility and players are powerless to stop them. Because SSO just doesn't seem to care. Let's stop the breaks for a moment and ask the question, how do ambassadors get selected? This is the question we've been asking since the start of this series because the information is extremely vague and indefinite in every sense of the word. In SSO's own words, they say, Keep spreading the love, helping others, and being fantastic members of the community for the chance to join our ambassador program in the future. They are stipulating that positive, friendly people become ambassadors. So then why did these two people become ambassadors? These posts are from two players who harassed, attacked, insulted, and bullied other people, and then became ambassadors. Wait, this means I don't have to kiss up to become an ambassador I can just be chosen no matter how much of a dick I am? Pretty much, yeah. Dude, perfect, hell yeah! But, dude, you hate the ambassadors! I love that fucking gift box more, bitch! Give me those damn headphones! Ah! Ah, shit. A person would send an email to SSO explaining who these people were, but they did not care. 
Should we read that line again? Keep spreading the love, helping others, and being fantastic members of the community. How are they upholding this statement in these posts? In any of these posts? We have an ongoing situation of ambassador who has sent a witch hunt out on someone that has slighted her. It has gone to the point where she had to completely shut down all social media. But so far, SSO has not done anything to resolve this situation. Where is the kindness and love in this? Fear is not an uncommon reaction to ambassadors, as we found. People are terrified of them, especially those who've stepped forward about what they have done to them. They want to remain anonymous. They don't want the ambassadors to find out. This fear is not singular. It's universal. Anyone who has had bad run-ins with ambassadors are afraid of them. They trade carefully because they believe that these ambassadors can send hate their way. Or they trade carefully because the possibility of becoming an ambassador diminishes if they don't like you. Or even worse, you get shunned from the community. These are not single stories. They are common stories. Someone once said ambassadors don't have power, but they do. They have power over the communities and some of them are not shy in using those communities to hurt others. What does an ambassador have to do to actually get a solid reprimand? We have the other glaring issue of other great people not becoming ambassadors. Many people say that good art often makes SSO set up. There are a lot of photography and art ambassadors. But then why are artists who are clearly hankering to become ambassadors shoved aside? Like that Hungarian YouTuber who has now been blacklisted by SSO. These are friendly, upstanding people of the community and they don't seem to have done anything wrong. Many people have come forward saying that ambassadors pick these people and even an ambassador said this in our previous video. They admitted that ambassadors pick ambassadors. Others have come forward saying that the only way to become an ambassador is being in their good graces. That's your only chance. It is basically nepotism, the practice among those with power of influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. Now, I personally had a talk to an ambassador and they said that they only give suggestions about who should get the title. They do not give any further guidelines about who should be chosen. <laughs> but now we have a problem. Who then is blacklisting these people? Who is ignoring great content creators and why are they hiring people like these two? The only other option is then that SSO is really messed up. Because if it's not the ambassadors, as they say, then the only other entity that can be held responsible for why these people are being blacklisted is SSO. So is SSO actually ostracizing these people? Do they have a vendetta against certain players or creators? We really don't have an answer. Some people might now jump up and say, Oh no, these wannabe ambassadors are just horrible people and they're putting on a false face. But by Ange and Puff's own admission, they too had been bad people at one point and SSO not only forgave them, but they kept them on as ambassadors. So why are some people being forgiven and others are not? What is going on behind the scenes that a program is so vague in how you can re represent a company? You can break rules, harass people, send out witch hunts, post unsavory images, but you're still good. And they do represent SSO. From their smiles to their art to their comments, everything ambassadors do reflects SSO as a company. And whatever that ambassador is, is what SSO turns into. At this point in time, I'd say SSO is a childish, toxic, positive bully. We further have the issue of kids becoming ambassadors. 13-year-olds that will not have the experience nor the know-how in how to handle such a position. Power goes quickly to a person's head. But a 13-year-old? How quickly will they feel that prickle of invincibility, especially when SSO does not curtail nor manage the ambassador program. SSO needs to be more open about this program. What are the prerequisites? What are the ambassador's terms of service? What are their duties? Where are they allowed and what aren't they allowed? And what behavior does SSO find unacceptable? Because at this point in time, more people are afraid of ambassadors than actually looking up to them. And can you blame them? An ambassador once asked me, how can we show to you that we listen? And I'm going to read my response that I gave to her because I think that this is quite poignant. As per your question and how you can show that we are heard, treat us better in chat and online. Make sure that each ambassador understands that their responsibility is to the community and to treat it the way that they would want to be treated. Reply to comments that are both kind and harsh. Acknowledge that people with hard opinions have good opinions. And show to us by the way you treat us that you hear us and respect us. Really, that's all that we want. Open, clear and honest communication. If you're looking for people to be truly inspired from, go to the people who aren't trying to be an ambassador. Go to Star Stable Updates, Abigail Pinehaven, Dennis Wystorm, Max King Moon, Corinne Misthill, Alice Longberg, and people that are not only honest about SSO, but are willing to listen to what you have to say as a person. These people are the true light of the community, and don't let ambassadors like the ones from these stories tell you otherwise.
Okay, well, that was the entire Ambassador video series. Thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Moon? What the hell? Oh, God. Moon? Moon! Moon? You good? Yeah. Well, uh, let's get back to finishing the video. Holy shit. Look. Greetings. 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 Hello. We have ascertained that you have been conversing on the atrocities of the four representatives of Star Stable. We want to bring more of the social affairs that have wreaked havoc across the lands of this crumbling community, and we have narratives of the inadequate supervisors within the establishment. We bring you, as social media would say, the tea. Oh, oh shit. shit! Wait, does this mean you're staying? Yeah. It's all gone to shit, Governor. I hate this series. <laughs>